even working long hours and accepting positions on a number of boards and committees, Greenwalt managed to maintain a rare balance in his life. One of the things that impressed his peers, I'm sure, was that in addition to running the business and understanding the science and dealing with all the political problems, he had a private life that was quite enviable. To no loss to the business, you know, he was always there when he needed it. He was fascinated by things in nature. He was an extraordinary photographer with the help from some of his friends who knew the science well. There was no such thing as unproductive downtime for Crawford Greenwald. Even in his leisure time activities, he found ways to learn, create, invent, or refine. Then he had, he was always, always doing some project or another, and uh, they would not necessarily be even linked. At one point, it was uh, time-lapse photography, and at that time, you couldn't buy time-lapse cameras, and he built one using an alarm clock uh, so that it would take a frame every whatever you chose to set it at. And you'd get these terrific pictures, which we got to see, of course, of a plant growing. And it's amazing to see what they do. Well, they twist around, and they look for the sun, move their petals, and eventually fold up. Then he got interested in birds because my mother was looking at birds and feeding them on a terrace outside their bedroom. And then looking at a hummingbird, that was an even bigger challenge. At that point, though, he was president of the DuPont Company, and he could get the uh, some of the experimental station people to do work for him uh, on their uh, time off, which they did, and uh, built this incredible movie camera. This was fascinating to Crawford. He learned how to take very fast pictures, the strobes, and actually froze the wings of hummingbirds in flight, which nobody had ever thought possible. Certainly had never been done. He spent a great deal of time traveling in South America looking for new and different kinds of hummingbirds, photographing them in every opportunity he got, and eventually published a, a remarkable book, Hummingbirds. <laughs>